In this part of the lesson, we are going to talk about a second strategy for using remote themes. That's forking the entire source repository for the theme. You may recall that we said there were various levels of complexity in using themes. Using a remote theme from a forked repository is the most complicated one. It allows you to create a website that has a lot of special features. This is my website, for example. It has this hero image on the front page, these callouts. Some of the pages are just generic uh, web pages, but there are other special ones like this news page, which is essentially setting up a blog, and also this gallery page, which is kind of nice for showing off different pictures and things like that. So setting up a website is, that is this complicated requires having a lot of different files, a lot more files than you could just copy over individually, which is why you want to be able to copy essentially the entire website through a process that we call forking. The setup of a forked remote theme is similar to what we have done so far, with a few exceptions. The first step, of course, is to fork the repository, and we'll see how to do that. Sometimes the repository will have a button that you can just click to do the forking, but usually you have to fork it in the conventional GitHub way. Then you have to set the remote theme in the config.yaml file, as we did previously. One thing you have to do is figure out all of the special features of the website and how they work. This might be things like blog posts or galleries or shop fronts or any of the special kinds of features that the website has. And in order to enable those things, then you need to customize the various data pages. Config.yaml is going to have a lot of the information, but there may be other YAML pages that you also have to modify. And you may simply need to delete files or add files in order to get the parts of the website that you want. In this particular case, we're going to be probably deleting some of the many files that we have already copied over instead of finding them and bringing them into our website. If the pages are fancy and have features like callouts and hero images and things like that, then sometimes those are controlled on the headers of individual pages. So the top of each page will have some YAML where you can set features that are specific to that page rather than specific to the entire site. The starting point is going to be the GitHub landing page for the theme that you have chosen. This is the theme that I use for my website, Bulma Clean Theme. On the landing page of that theme, there's a link that will take you to the example of the website. So if we look at this, we see that the features of the page are somewhat similar to my website. There's the little shorthand versions of the blog posts. Here are the various callouts, only with different icons. And then they don't have a hero image, but rather have a colorful block. These are all things that we will customize after we fork the theme. In order to fork the theme, we have to go to this button at the top that says fork and it's going to ask you which account it should fork it to. So I'm going to fork it to my main repository. It has now switched over, so instead of saying Chris Rhymes Bull McLean theme, it now says Baskoff S. Bull McLean theme. I could just directly set up this repository as a GitHub Pages site. However, there are certain connections that remain between the original site and the fork, and I don't necessarily want to maintain those connections. Also, the name of the repository is going to be Bulma Clean Theme, so if I want it to be something else like slash website, I need to move this content from the repository that I forked into a different repository that I'm using for the website. Before I can do that, though, I need to go to GitHub Desktop I've closed and then restarted GitHub Desktop to make sure that when I go to the clone repository dialog that the new repository that I cloned will actually show up. Here it is, Bulma Clean Theme. I'm going to choose that and then go ahead and clone it locally. 
I don't really care about contributing or using for my own purposes, so I will just pick one. Now I'm ready to go to my File Explorer and check on the website. Here it is, Ball McLean theme. Since I want to use my own repository name, website, instead of Bulma Clean Theme in the URL, I've created a new repository called Website, and I've gone into the GitHub Pages part of the settings. I notice that there isn't any docs folder that this operates out of. This website is going to operate from the root folder of the repository. So instead of selecting docs like I did before, I will select root. I'm not going to use any theme because I'm going to set that manually in the config.yaml file. So I'll go ahead and clone this repository and then check back with you. Now that I've cloned the repository, I basically have an empty repository ready to use. So let's go to the forked repository. I'm going to copy all of the files except for not any of these hidden files here. Because my website has its own .git file. Now I have a lot of new files. that I'll go ahead and push up. One key thing that I haven't done yet is to set the remote theme in the config.yaml file. So I'll do that and set it to the last part of the path of the repository that I forked, like that. Save it and push it. Now let's go to the website URL and see if we can find the new website. It might take a few moments for it to build. All right, well, something showed up, but the theme is clearly not working correctly. In this case, I think it may be because I don't have the correct base URL. Let's try that. After it's had a little time to rebuild the website, we can try refreshing the page again and see if that helped. All right, that seemed to have solved the problem. So I now have a website coming out of my URL. However, it's just the generic website. So I'm going to need to go in and change some configuration files to make it be the way I want. Let's start with config.yaml. I started by changing a few of these settings here. I also commented out some things like the URL, since I don't have a custom URL, the GitHub sponsor, and I turned off the Discus comments. Also changed the blog author to my name, but otherwise pretty much left everything the same. So let's see how this changes things. After giving a little time for the site to rebuild, let's try refreshing. One thing you can do if the website is not loading is to go down and look at the deployment. If I scroll down here and see this environment, I can click on GitHub Pages and check on the status of the current deployment. So right now it doesn't look like my most recent push has shown up yet in the deployment history. However, I see now that a new deployment has shown up here and it says that it's active. So if I go back and refresh the page now, I see that it says Steve's test website at the top. Still need to figure out how to change these other things and that's going to be in different configurations. At this point, I probably need to be checking for directions. Going to the website, it says here that documentation is on the demo website. So let's go there and check things out. So general configuration. Let's see. Theming. Setting the primary color. 
wow there's lots of stuff here setting the sidebar top navigation and so on so there are lots of files like navigation.yaml in the data directory that I need to try editing to make the website look the way that I want. So if I go to the data directory, I can see that there's a lot of things here that I need to work on. For example, the navigation. This is going to tell me how to set the headings in the dropdown and also the overall links at the top. So if I don't want this to say blog and I want it to say news, I can change that. Here's the page where I set those cute little callouts. Let's change those. So I've changed a few things here. Let's go ahead and save that as well. Let's also try customizing the home page a little bit by going to index.md. So I've changed a few things up here in the YAML that applies specifically to the home page. I've also changed this level one header and let's just go through here and get rid of some more of this stuff. And that's probably enough. Let's go ahead and push it and see what kind of changes I've made. Here are the pages I made to the callouts on the landing page, the navigation bar, and also the home page itself. All right, let's go back and see what's going on with the deployments. All right, now the publication is pending, so we need to wait a few moments until it's done. Jekyll's doing its job. In progress and active. All right, let's reload the page and see what happens. All right, now I've changed the blog header to news. Here's the home page metadata. I've changed these callouts and here's the content of the home page. So clearly on a website as complicated as this, you're going to have to do a lot of playing around with the settings. On my website here, I probably spent two days figuring out how to get all the different bits of it to work the way that I want. If this seems like a lot to you, then don't choose a complicated website. Pick one of the simpler ones to start with.